It's Naomi Wolf of Daily Clout, and I'm so honored to be here at the Augusta, Maine State Capitol with Representative Shelley Rudnicki. Welcome, Representative Rudnicki. Thank you. Thank you for doing this with us. This is fantastic. Thank you for coming to Maine. Well, I'm really excited to be here, although we're here uh, kind of in a sad context. As you can see, all of this is closed. Isn't that correct? Or it is closed? closed to the public, yeah, as a, um, because of the pandemic, is what they're saying. And it's really closed to legislators in most ways, too, because we are Zoom meeting. Our committees are on Zoom. Right now, we're currently in a special session, and we're at the Civic Center because they're saying um, we can't um, social distance in here. Well, we're not social distancing over there. So why would, why do you think they won't let the legislators in? To I think it's it's a control thing and not letting the public in, because the committees that we're that are having meetings and stuff on Zoom, the public doesn't have the access that they had before, and everything's getting rammed through. Everything, right? People, yeah, everything about the Zoom meetings are controlled, and um, you know the public trying to get in and and be part of the public hearings are very difficult. It's going to dial down civic engagement, oh, correct? Yeah, it really has, I think it has a lot of that. My first couple of years here, people would be out here waiting for legislators to come and go. and Which is we, a great American tradition. And, yeah, and we don't have that now. We do not have that at all. So it's really, so so this physical space being closed means that the people of, of Augusta and also your constituents, if they right. came down to see you, would have a they can't come see you. They can't right. come meet in your office. They there is actually legislators on the other side of the aisle that are not answering constituent email. They are not answering their phone calls to constituents because they don't have to. They do not because they're they not down here. The, they, they never, never see, see the constituents face to face. They don't have to. I mean, it's up until the pandemic, um, citizens could come in and um, if they're sitting in the in the gallery or they're sitting in the in, inside committee meetings and they see a legislator step out they can talk to us outside the room they can you know they can stop us to, if they have a question that maybe they've already testified and they can't they could can stop us if we're going outside if we're just even taking a quick break right. they can talk to us even lobbyists can't do it lobbyists right. can't even come in here to talk to us right. and so basically you're saying not only is it keeping citizens from being able to engage with their representatives and engage with the content of the laws that are being passed here. You're also saying it's making, it's keeping important information from flowing to legislators to make good decisions. I think it is because I think so many of the legislators, especially if they're not open to listening or to answering a phone call or answering an email, they're not getting all the information and they don't have to answer to the constituents. Right. You know, I could choose not to answer the constituents because how would they get, you know, when we're voting on they, they something, there's in. no, they can't get in, they can't do anything. So basically you're saying that when one party gets almost too much power, they stop being accountable, ironically. Well, this, right now, it's not too much power. They have all the power. Um, I've just been in, you know, in session for the last few hours, and it just... They're just put, pushing everything through. They're not listening to people. They're, they just voted against parents. They just voted against small businesses. And so they, basically there's no public pressure, even if the Democrats sitting in the Civic Center want to push something through. In the past, you would have had all these angry parents out here right. saying, don't do it, count my vote, count my voice, right. and now the parents can't get to you. Right. I understand. Okay. And can citizens be in the Civic Center and no, watch this process? No, they cannot be in at all. Is so basically you're saying that in many ways, democratic processes have been curtailed oh, completely. since the pandemic yes. with under the guise of the pandemic. Right. And really we're looking at kind of an empty civic space that right. the taxpayers are still paying for right. um, that they can't use. Right. And last, last question, every day for quite a while you've been doing something. Tell us what it is. So I came down here every day, 34 days straight, I did. I knocked on the governor's door, I knocked on the speaker's door to no answer. Or if I got an answer it was a staff member telling me they're not meeting or taking any so and so the door to... hasn't been opened to you once, and there are sometimes people in the governor's office, right. but they're not opening the door to you. And if they do open the door, they tell me the governor's not available to in-person meetings. And but I've yet to hear back from her in a year. In a year. So oh, another right. kind of autocratic, basically, tyranny here in yes. Maine. So we're just going to wrap up and see if we can go on inside with Representative Rudnicki, whose tenacity I really admire. <laughs> Maine um, has been 
under emergency law for 14 months. It's extended and extended and extended. Um, and there are shocking things happening like businesses uh, closing because of uh, onerous restrictions, hard to follow restrictions, and also two snitch lines. The government has set up hotlines to encourage people to inform on businesses or on their neighbors who are not following draconian uh, coronavirus restrictions. So the definition of pandemic is widespread and far-reaching disease, and I'm walking around Augusta, and uh, you know, I, I, I am not seeing a, a, a civilization in crisis, yeah. uh, and I, but I'm seeing the seat of government for this whole state closed down, and the state under emergency law, and right. no uh, plans to get out of emergency. Oh, so the Democrats are supporting more and more emergency yes. law, yes. more and more. Okay, yes, so there's no actually, reason not to end right, the state and of emergency. Right, and we looked it up because we yeah. wanted to find out why. No, there's no reason. Let me ask the governor of Maine directly, why won't you end the state of emergency in Maine? Now let's go inside. I'll follow you, represent. Okay, we're walking into the state house here in Augusta, Maine. I'm with Representative Rebecca. I'm going to the mask. Here is my lipstick. <laughs> I like your, I like your face shield. I can't wear the mask, so you can see there is a sign that says it's close to the general. So again, yeah, until further notice, there's no date, there's no when, it's just closed. Yes. The health director, did you, yeah. did you notify him? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, that's the protocol. And then the second thing you have to do is you have to go down and talk to the exact director before they come in, because they have to answer questions about COVID and stuff like that. You can go in. Right. Because you're a representative. Right. But as far as testing, they can also go in, but they have to notify us. We're going to have somebody from the executive director's office come out. Okay. Would you do that? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just pointing out that here's all the leadership here in this office, but also all these committees where things happen for people. Um, legislative information, criminal justice, veterans and legal affairs. So a lot of citizen services go on here. So what are we waiting for right now? Um, I believe they're waiting for somebody from the executive's office to come down and ask you some COVID questions. Okay. Hi. Upstairs with me. Um, okay, so the way it normally works is your chief of staff is supposed to, right? Because okay. they, they're the ones that figure out the space and right. the availability, and the only I mean, there's a whole policy about how it's supposed to work. Why don't you come with me? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And is that based on some sort of study, or is that based on a study? It's based on the policy that they've adopted. Okay, thank you. Because the state house is technically closed uh -huh. to the public. Uh -huh. so we've only been, only been allowed to bring guests in since March. Prior to that, we couldn't even bring a guest in. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yes. But why is that? Why is there a bigger uh, space allotted to, say, a group of 15 citizens who would like to come in a safe way? During this period of time, the council has adopted the policy. Oh, but I, I don't understand the, the science be, behind only two people it, rather than creating more space for more people. I, as Representative Brett, think he knows I am not a member of the Legislative Council, so this is not my... Okay, so these I are not the rules for the enforcing. I am the enforcing. Yeah, I'm like the executive director. You're doing so your job. I exactly. totally understand. Um, if the legislator's chief of staff indicates that there is sufficient space available in the state house complex, so it's really completely up to the legislator's chief of staff to say if someone can come in to the state house. Now. Right, for the two people. Probably. Right, for the two people. Standing up and agreeing to abide by all the requirements set forth in this policy. Upon completion of the guest form, the executive director's office will provide to each guest a guest pass, personal contact information, or personal or confidential information protected pursuant to the main revised statute, so one, section 42, subsection 3, paragraph C1. So I don't have any privacy when I visit my representative. Um, you may hand these over to some other agency. If somebody gets sick. Okay. So it's, it's for contact tracing information. Uh, mm, but nothing here restricts it to HIPAA law. It could be handed over to other agencies or other authorities. According to this. Okay, again. It's kind of a deterrent <laughs> to see your representative. The um, formed face mask. 
if you are supposed to wear that, or a neck mount face shield, you can wear that, or a face shield eye and ear mount, you can wear that, or an ear mount face shield with eye cutouts, you can wear that, or a regular face mask. It's, but it doesn't say that here. No, because we had some issues with being able to wear the shield, so they specifically lined up the gotcha. shields. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, I'm happy to sign this. Yes. My question is there any science? that any peer-reviewed academic studies that your office or the body that created this could provide to me as a journalist? Again, academics that have read it, but they, they haven't provided them to you to hand out to people or to you to right. share with constituents. Right. Any, any right. peer-reviewed studies? No, as far as I'm aware. Okay. All right. Yeah. You've been very kind. Uh, I don't know if you shake hands, but I, I'm shaking hands. <laughs> okay. okay. chamber where you can see transparently what legislators are doing. There's right? actually a gallery upstairs. And there's a gallery upstairs, which is very important. And it says, uh, persons desiring to observe the house in session are asked to utilize the gallery upstairs. It's really important in our system. It means that citizens can come in, right. go sit upstairs in the gallery, and observe these legislators hearing every word, seeing every interaction. Uh, they can caucus among themselves. They can right. have a conversation. That is no longer Possible. Right. So really, the people have almost no way to get their legislature out. They exactly. can't just come and walk into this public space and say, we want you to open up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no one sitting here. There's no one convening. These, this would have been a waiting area for citizens waiting to see the governor in the past. Shelly Rodnicki, can I meet with the governor? She's in meetings right now. She is. Yes. Could I leave my name and number again? I've been Absolutely. doing this for a year and she's yet to get back to me. Uh, I, have a, I have a few questions actually. Hi. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask our communications team to come out and, and speak with you. Uh, this minute? Sure. I'll wait. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. And this has been 14 months. 14 months. Yeah. Well, so you left your name and number again, and you never get called back. Uh -uh. That not ever, and they know that you're a representative. Uh -huh. Yeah, I haven't been called back. In and the communications months. director hasn't called. The chief of staff hasn't called. No. And they didn't give you a reason. No, they just don't call. And each party has their issues. Right. Hey, how hi. are you? Hi. Hey, can I help you? Yes, hi. I'm Naomi Wolf. Hey, Wave, if you prefer. Um, I'm with Daily Cloud. Uh huh. Um, and I, I would like to understand better why. Representative uh, McNicky, who is tasked with representing her constituents to the governor, has been knocking on the governor's door for months and months and can't get a Well, um, it, you're with the media? I yeah, am with you. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, you are welcome to reach out to our press secretary and then go through that process because that's how we answer questions to the media. You don't, so you don't talk to reporters directly anymore? I don't. No, I sure don't. Why not? You can talk to. <laughs> Because we have lots of stuff. We don't want to talk to the press. I came downstairs. Oh, okay. You need to go here. Oh, the press secretary. You can send her in. Oh, okay. You're not supposed to be in the building. Do you want to have Do you want to take their visitor passes and we'll head right down right now? I will walk you out. Okay, that's fine. So, I'm sorry, what are we supposed to do? You're not allowed to be in this building right now. As a press. This is the chief of staff. She knows that. This is the chief of staff. Thank you. All right, thank yep. you. I came downstairs and I'm not going to do it. That's what I did. I mean, isn't she allowed us to do that? No. And aren't I allowed to ask questions as a journalist? Not in this administration. That's what they're saying. They're saying I'm not allowed to? Is yes. Is writing somewhere? You have to go through the press secretary, is what they say. So I can't ask personal questions of anyone in the state house as in person as a journalist. That's what they're saying. How, how is that inappropriate? I'm not. I am a nonpartisan staff. Person. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not putting no, you on no, the spot. No, I'm just oh, trying no. to understand the rules. No, no, no. What I'm saying, and Representative Red Nicky knows this. Nonpartisan staff. This is crazy. Nonpartisan staff have no opinion. No, I, I no, get no, that. No. I respect that. No, I'm, no, just, no, I'm not asking anything. your opinion. Because there's no rule that says journalists have to go through the comms office for anyone. I have. I've never worked for the governor. All right. I know right. nothing about the I, I will stop branch. ruining your day. There you go. <laughs> I, thank I, you. I've worked in the legislature for 
30 some odd years. Are journalists allowed to are like journalists that. allowed to ask questions of their representatives in the state house under ordinary circumstances? Yes. I want to ask her. Oh. I assume so. I've, I've never worked for a representative. I've always worked for the nonpartisan offices. Understood. And, and are journalists allowed to ask questions of public servants in Augusta? I'm sure in there are, yes, I'm sure there are many ways to do that. Is the First Amendment not operative inside there right now during oh. COVID? I'm not being mean. I just am truly oh, asking. Ms. Wolf, <laughs> no, I really am yeah, asking. Yeah. Guess what? What? I'm a lawyer, so I I do understand what you're doing. And good luck to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate the visit. Thank you.